Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba rahmatu fillah Very important for us to know and understand <clears throat> That in order to have our deeds accepted in Islam By Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala That two conditions have to be in place Shartain li kabul al-amal and these two conditions, in order to have our deeds accepted by Allah Azza wa Jal, are first, being sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you do the act of worship uh, directed to Allah alone. And that means that the sincerity, that your heart is reserved and fixated on doing that deed to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second condition is that that deed is in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa la alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitab al kareem, wa ma umiru ila li abudullaha mukhlisina lahu deena huna fa wa yuqimu salaa wa yutu zaka wa thalika deen wa thalika deen al qayyima Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al kareem and they were not commanded except that they worship Allah alone sincerity without partners and for him is the religion you know, that, that's the sincerity, that's the ikhlas. On the deen of hunafa, the deen of sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which was the, the methodology and the religion of all the prophets, alayhim afadal salatu wa salam. وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَى لِيَعْبُلُوا اللَّهُ مُخْلِسِينَ اللَّهُ دِينَ هُنَفَى وَيُقِيمُوا salat And to establish the prayer and pay the zakat. And that is the straight deen. That is the uh, upright way. That is the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So letting us know, that, that the nations before us were ordered, the nations that followed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, were commanded to worship him and him alone with sincerity. Devoting all of their worship. And that negates shirk. That negates polytheism. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We can have kareem Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushrika bi wa yaghfiru ma duna thalik liman yasha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that uh, verily Allah does not forgive that you associate partners with him. But he forgives other than that for whomsoever he wishes. So letting us know if we die upon shirk, that shirk is so serious that it is one of the most severe and grievous sins that a person can do in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Associating a partner with him, worshipping other than him, directing any of those acts of worship. And that's why Ahl Sunnah is so severe about trying to adhere to the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and why they fight shirk and why they adhere to Tawheed and they make ta'zim of Tawheed because that's the most serious thing to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala <clears throat> as one of the great Imams says tawheed. He said in the greatest thing that Allah commanded was Tawheed was to worship Him and Him alone anhu. And the greatest thing, or the most severe thing, or grievous thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned against was shirk, polytheism. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not accept that we worship other than Him. And every Muslim knows this, but not every Muslim practices this. This is the problem. So that's where it comes to that ikhlas, that sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second condition, as we mentioned, is that our acts of worship, that prayer that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us with, that zakat that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us with, hajj, all of the acts of ibadah, they are, also they must meet the criterion of following the sunnah 
of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the uh, hadith عن أبي حفص عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله تعالى عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إنما أعمال بالنيات وإنما لكل مري منوى فمن كانت حجته إلى الله ورسوله فهجته إلى الله ورسوله ومن كانت حجته للدنيا يصيبها أمرأة ينكعها فهجته إلى ما هجر إليه رواه شيخان uh, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu that Umar bin al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala who is also known by his kunya Abu Hafs radiyallahu ta'ala and he said that I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying verily actions are tied to the intentions and everyone shall get that for which he intended therefore he who migrates for Allah and his messenger is migrated for Allah and his messenger and he who migrates to take some woman in marriage then or, or for some worldly gain, then he will get that for which he intended. So this ahabat this hadith, is one of those ahadith which establishes and reaffirms that usul, that asl, that foundation that our deeds must be uh, built upon uh, ikhlas, sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu said in a hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, من من عمل عملا ليس عليه أمرنا فهو رد وفي رواية ما this is the hadith of Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنها in which she said that uh, that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said whoever does an issue uh, whoever does uh, an act which is not in accordance with our with our religion we'll have it rejected so this also this hadith establishes that same foundation and it lets us know the second condition that we mentioned which is that our deeds have to follow the sunnah meaning that anything related to the religion of islam related to ibadah related to worship in islam or mu'amalat that has to do with islam that has already been legislated in islam that is that someone tries to establish as new as a new form of worship a new way of trying to come closer to Allah or a new type of mu'amalat which is not in accordance with the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam then it will have it rejected so this is the asl of bid'ah that bid'ah is rejected the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said <coughs> That every newly invented matter is a going astray, and every going astray uh, leads to the fire. So this lets us know that we must do those deeds in accordance with the sunnah. But the topic I really wanted to hit on was the first uh, condition uh, for having our deeds accepted, and that is sincerity or ikhlas. And with regards to that, I just wanted to read some of the statements of the Salaf al Salih because we often talk about the Salaf, but we don't uh, always mention some of their narrations to affirm the creed and menhaj that we're upon. Uh, Ibrahim al Nakha'i, rahimahullah ta'ala, said, When shaitan comes to you while you are in prayer and says, You are showing off, make it longer. So that is one of the ways that the Salaf, they dealt with, uh, uh, they, they illustrated uh, ikhlas or sincerity, which is that first condition for having our deeds accepted, is that they would fight the shaitan because the shaitan's going to come to you while you're praying. The shaitan's going to come to you while you're making hajj and umrah. The shaitan's going to come to you even when you spend. The shaitan's going to come to you even when you... Uh, for those who are students or du'at or mashayikh, when they're giving a lecture, when they are calling people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the shaitan's going to whisper to them and try to take their sincerity, their ikhlas away. So what did Ibrahim al Nakha'i said? He said, when the shaitan comes to you while you're in prayer and says you are showing off, 
make it longer. So the shaitan comes to you in two ways. One way he can say, beautify yourself. He can, he can actually make you try to beautify, beautify your dawah, make it more appealing to the youth with more entertainment and losing the sincerity that, uh, that uh, is required of you. Or that you try to make, uh, put yourself and call to yourself, which is a uh, issue which can lead to hezbiya, can lead to group partisanship. And so the shaitan comes to you in both of these ways. That either you can beautify the act of worship because of the shaitan is ordering you and commanding you and enticing you to beautify it for the people to show off. Or he can come to you in the other way to where he can, it can be discouraging you saying, oh, in order to flee from showing off, you should not continue. Don't give that lecture because you don't want to show off. Don't make uh, that uh, that talk to the people because you don't want the people think that you're putting yourself forward. So this is the other way in which the shaitan comes from you, comes to you. Do not think and underestimate the shaitan, but battle him by returning and coming back with your niyyah. That as soon as you get that thought, because you're human, you're going to get that thought. The shaitan's going to come to you. Your nafs is going to come to you. Then say, wait a minute. This is for Eliza and Jim. Make your niyyah for Allah and continue on with the ibadah. And that is in light of Ibrahim al Nakhai's statement. One of the Salaf said, Direct me to an action by which I will never cease to be performing for Allah the Exalted. It was said to him, Always intend good, because you will never cease to be performing even if you do not perform any actions. The intention is made in the absence of any actions. Whoever intended to pray at night and then slept, the reward for what he intended will be written for him. So I think that narration is clear that, as he said, and he explained with a beautiful example, he said, whoever intended to pray at night and then they went to sleep. So that means they made their intention before they slept. They said, yes, I'm going to get up and I'm going to pray. But then they, they maybe they overslept the reward for what he intended will be written for him. And this is in accordance with the statement of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that we will be rewarded for our intentions. When we make intention to do something good, even if we don't fulfill it, if something something uh, prevents us from fulfilling it, but we had sincere intention to do it, then you will get that reward of it. And that's the ni'mah of Islam and one of the bounties and favors from Allah One of the Salaf said, I love that I have an intention for everything, even my eating, drinking, and sleeping. It was said to Sahal, what is the hardest thing for the soul to achieve? He said sincerity when there is no other desire in it. So having pure sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is extremely difficult because we often look for those rewards in the dunya. Even the one, the mujahid who goes fi sabilillah, he's maybe looking for war booty. Maybe he's looking for war captives. Maybe he's looking for, he's looking for something in the dunya. Maybe he's looking for fame. He's looking for all kind of things. You know, everyone's intention is different. However, to make your intention solely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have no other intention, that is pure. That's pure ikhlas. And that is the pure uh, sweetness of iman. Uh, Yaqub al-Makfuf said, the sincere person is the one who hides his good deeds just like he hides his evil deeds. Look at the hikmah, the wisdom of the salaf. That's why I advise myself and my brothers and sisters to return to those books of the salaf. Many things are translated in English, so you can benefit from many narrations. For those of you who know Arabic, you have a world of head, uh, 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 really almost an infinite amount of treasures to, to pull from. And the reason being, because in your lifetime, in my lifetime, I would not be able to read all of these books. But I can benefit from many of these treasures. And this is just what I am in this maktaba, not including what's outside. So it shows us there is a tarath from the Salaf that we can benefit from. And may Allah Azza wa Jal bless us with ikhlas, with thabad, and bless us to benefit. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And bless us with ilm al-nafi, ruskin tayyibu amal al One of the Salaf wrote to his brother, he said, make your intention sincere in all of your actions, and little action will suffice you.
Subhanallah, look at that hikmah. Make your intention sincere in all of your actions, and little action will suffice you. You won't have to do a lot of deeds, but because of your intention, you will uh, gain, you will reap the benefits of ikhlas. Ayyub al said, Purifying the intention is harder than all other actions for those who act. Yahya ibn Mu'ad said, Sincerity separates good actions from false, like the separation of milk from dung and blood. Asusi said, What Allah desires from the actions of His creation is sincerity and nothing else. So, Ahabatifillah, that affirms for us what the ayat, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَى لِيَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ مُخْلِسِينَ And they weren't ordered except to worship Allah with sincerity. Al-Junaid said, To Allah belong servants who understand. And when they understand, they act. And when they act, they make their actions sincere. Their recalling of sincerity at the time of doing righteousness is what accumulates the greatest good for them. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika an ushrika bika wa ana a'lamu wa staghfiruka li ma la'lamu. Hoshab used to cry and say, My name has reached the large mosque, meaning the people will know who I am. So look at this. This is that taqwa and that humility and the... Uh, the way the Salaf were is they didn't want fame. They didn't like fame. Unlike many of us in this day, we adore fame. We will do anything to get a YouTube hit, to get a Facebook read, to get a Instagram whatever, to get a post on Snapchat or whatever. All these various social media sites will do anything. We'll do antics. We'll do magic tricks. We'll do anything to get famous. We'll refute someone just to have a million... Uh, comments and a million views. We'll do anything to gain that fame. We're so different than our Salaf. Wallahu musta'an. Uh, Asusi said, Sincerity is to lose the vision of sincerity in oneself. One of the Salaf said, Whoever sees sincerity in his sincerity, his sincerity is itself in need of sincerity. The destruction of every sincere person lies in his sincerity to the extent that he sees sincerity in himself. When he abandons seeing sincerity in himself, he will be sincere and purified. Allahu Akbar. To make sure that we understand this narration of the Salaf, it means that do not make tiskiyah to uh, making tiskiyah for yourself in that you are saying tazakka. Uh, uh, yourself to make uh, to uh, praise yourself and believe that you've attained sincerity to praise yourself believing that you personify Salafiyah and personify the Sunnah so not to 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 believe that you are doing you are you've achieved it you're something great but the one who's humble is always real uh, realizing and reflecting on his or her shortcomings Wallahu musta'an, and especially with regards to sincerity. Abu Uthman said, Sincerity is to forget about the creation by constantly looking at the Creator in terms of gaining admiration for your deeds. Uh, Ibrahim al Adam said, The one who loves fame is not, truth, is not truthful to Allah. Allahu Akbar. That, that's a powerful narration of the Salaf uh, to show the importance of ikhlas and as a reminder, because like I said, there are so many antics that the people do in this time in order to bring about fame, in order to get their name, in order to increase their fortune, on, uh, in order to womanize, all of these th <coughs> things by using the religion of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen when in fact it should be to purify their soul, bring them closer to Allah and glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name. Sufyan al said, they, meaning the Salaf, 
uh, used to hate fame and reputation due to wearing nice garments because eyes would stretch towards them. Look at this. So they were really uh, humble and they didn't want to call attention to themselves. They wanted to keep themselves sincere in their religion. Naim ibn Hamad said, Abdullah ibn Mubarak frequently used to sit in his house for long periods of time. So it was said to him, don't you feel lonely and isolated? He said, how can I feel isolated when I am with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? This is not in the way in which Ahlul Tasawwuf, the people, believe, but rather he was uh, uh, showing us and illustrating for us uh, the, the madhab of the Salaf is that they were doing things with sincerity to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to follow the sunnah and they were reminded, they reminded themselves because they were on ibadah, wa haq, that they were uh, emulating the Prophet so the sunnah was alive for them because they practiced it. And they practiced it not to be seen to the people. They didn't wear a short thobe just because they wanted the people to notice that they were from Ahl sunnah in the masjid. They didn't wear the big beards just because they wanted the people to say, hey, he's, he's Salafi, he's Sunni, he's from Ahl sunnah But rather, they did, they did their deeds and they would do and continue to do de good deeds even behind closed doors. Sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in accordance with what? The sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Jafar ibn Hayyan said, the foundations of these actions are the intentions. Indeed, a man reaches with his intentions a position he does not reach with his actions. One of the people of wisdom used to say, when a man is speaking in a gathering and his speech amazes him, let him be silent. When he keeps silent and his silence amazes him, let him speak. So that, that, that shows that the Salaf were vigilant in com combating their nafs, combating the shaitan, and striving to be have sincerity in their uh, actions and deeds. Mutraf ibn Abdullah al-Shakhir said that I spend the night sleeping and wake up remorseful is more beloved to me than that I spend the night standing in prayer and wake up in admiration. An-Nu'man ibn Qais said, I never saw uh, Ubaidah performing any voluntary prayers in the mosque of Al-Hayt. So letting him know, because, and this is an illustration to show that he was doing his sunnah, uh, ibadah, his, his voluntary prayers at home so that the people didn't see, they didn't know, they didn't even think maybe he did these actions, these great actions of the Ibadah, which is the Nawafu, which brings you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> Ali radiallahu ta'ala said, the one who shows off has three characteristics. He is lazy when by himself, he is lively in energy when with others, and he increases in his actions when he is praised and decreases in them when he is criticized. Al-Hasan said, the one who shows off desires to overcome what Allah has decreed for him. He is an evil person who desires to inform the people that he is righteous in order to hear what they would say. He has obtained a position of vileness and wickedness from his Lord. It is therefore essential for the hearts of the believers to recognize him. So it's imperative to be away from that hypocrisy and make sure that you're not seeking to, to gain the praise and the admiration of the people, but rather you're seeking to get the praise and the, the admiration of your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah bless us with ikhlas, with abad, and sincerity. And this reminds me of the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu who said, إن الأول الناس يقضى عليه يوم القيامة رجل أستشهد فأتي به فعرفه أني عمه فعرفها فقال فما عملت فيها قال ما تركت قال قتلت فيك حتى أستشهد قال كذبت ولكنك فعلت لي قال هو جواد هو جواد فقد كيل ثم أمر به فصحب لوجهه حتى ألك في النار وكما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم so it's the hadith where the prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام said uh, verily, the first three people uh, who will be judged on the day of judgment, uh, 
uh, will be, and from them is is a man who will come before brought before Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and he will be asked, "What did you do?" And then the man says, uh, "I fought for your sake, fisabilik. You know, I fought, I, I I fought for you." And then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will say, "Kidab, you lied." Can you imagine your Lord Subhanahu wa Taala saying to you that you lied because there's no hiding? You, anyone else can judge you. You can argue with them back and forth, but your Lord Subhanahu wa Taala saying, "Kidab, you lied." But rather, you did it so that the people would say that he was brave. And then he said, "Fakad kil." Then it was said about him, meaning that, that this guy got that praise he was seeking in the dunya. Fakad kil, thumma umra bi fasor bela wajhi hatul kafinar. It was said about him, and then he was thrown in the face by his by his forelock. Suhib ala wajhi had to ul kafinar. Thrown in his face, suhib ala ala wajhi had to ul kafinar. He was dragged upon his face and thrown uh, uh, in the fire. And then the second one, of course, is the one who taught knowledge, sought knowledge and taught the people in the Qur'an, and then the same goes. He didn't have sincerity. He received the position from the people of being the alam, of being the, 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 the reader, the reciter, the great reciter, and then he was dragged in the fire because he didn't have ikhlas. And the third one is the one who's, who spent. It was a man who was given uh, it was blessed with wealth from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he gave it away in various causes. And, and, the, and when the man was asked, uh, So what did you do with it? He said, He said, I didn't leave off a, path, a, a way of spending. He didn't leave off any way of spending that would please Allah except that he did it. Everything you could imagine in charity, and may Allah increase our wealth so we can do the good deeds with sincerity to Allah. So he said, I, I didn't leave off a way to spend, and Allah at the end will say, Kibab, you lied, but rather you did it so that the people would say you were a spendthrift or a philanthropist. And Fakad Kil, and it was said about you. Uh, then he was dragged by his forelock in the fire. So, Ahabatifillah, the point of that hadith. And all of these narrations we mentioned of the Salaf was that in order to have your deeds accepted, sincerity and the Sunnah. And along with that sincerity, uh, emphasizing the sincerity in that, yes, the Shaitan will come to you during your deeds. You'll be right in the middle of a lecture. You'll be right in the middle of praying. You'll be right in the middle of doing some good deed and spending and, and, and showing off. It's going to come to you. So don't be fearful of that, but be fearful of continuing to show off. Even if you catch yourself and you are showing off, Recon reconnect with your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, reconnect with your intention, and make it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah azza wa jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.